Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now, don't worry, I'm not going to paint all of these miniatures on camera today, but I just wanted to very quickly show you how they look en masse. Uh, what we're going to do is some 15mm Soviet figures. These guys come from uh, Battlefront. These are their Team Yankee range. Uh, but I'm going to use them for something different, which I'll talk about towards the end of the video. This is why they're all individually based. Luckily, they're not very difficult to paint at all, so I will list all of the paints in the description below. Let's get started. Now to prime this fella, I've actually used English Uniform from the Vallejo Hobby Paint Spray Range. This is relatively new. Uh, if you do have a store near you that stocks Vallejo, uh, you might be able to find that they will bring some of these in for you, or you can order them online. I found them massively useful. Particularly for things like this, which, you know, <laughs> saves me the time of having to paint English uniform over a grey or white primer. And uh, just a couple of seconds that takes, and then we can get straight on to the next colours. And the first of those colours is actually going to be Bugman's Glow. So this is one of the, I think, three Citadel colours I'm going to use on this. If you did want to swap this out, you know, you want to use just Vallejo stuff, then something like Brown Rose would make a really good substitute here. Just cover in his skin, and you'll probably find you can do this in one coat, but if you do need to come back and make sure that it's a nice solid colour, you know, that's up to you. Now as you can see, there's not a lot of that to do at all. What I'm going to do next is bust it out my favourite leather colour, this is mahogany brown, and let's get the straps he's wearing. Now this of course, as always, is a little easier when you don't have the camera perched in front of you, but just take your time. Don't worry too much if you hit his collar tabs, because of course we're going to paint those a different colour in a minute. But any leather bits, and I would suggest, like for example, on his right shoulder, uh, his leather strap is going to pretty much disappear underneath this uh, uh, canvas thing. So don't bother painting it. You know, <laughs> at this scale, these sorts of things are just not going to be visible. So don't worry about doing it. Next up, with a little bit of German camo beige, we're going to fill in all of his pouches and those canvas straps. Now this one you might find, once you've put it on, you do need to come back and give it a second thin coat in some areas. But I'd suggest for the most part, you're probably not going to need to worry too much about it. Now if you do get lost for which bits are what colour, remember of course you can either just look at what's on the box, or it's easy enough to Google, you know, Soviet motor rifle battalion uh, uniform, and it will tell you what they're wearing. Uh, I'm not too fussed about accuracy. These are really going to be for just sort of, you know, pulp games and adventures. But let's get some black on there now. And I might thin that out a little bit more, actually. Remember as well, parts of his AK are going to be black. So again, this is one that you can very easily find <laughs> reference images for online. And then speaking of those wooden details, we'll use a little bit of beige brown to fill them in. And remember at the same time that he has got this little entrenching tool sticking out on the side of his leg. It's one of those details which, you know, it's actually really easy to miss. I did, on the first few of these guys I painted, completely skip this over and just forget about it. But uh, it looks kind of weird, you know, if you don't touch it in, so don't forget. Now we'll fill in his helmet, and for this I've got, this is either refractive or retractive green. <laughs> I can never seem to find a straight answer on what the actual colour is. The translation on it seems to go a bit funny sometimes. Now strictly speaking, this is actually a brighter green than it should be. But when we shade this, uh, I don't want to bother highlighting helmets on 15mm troops, you know. <laughs> so when we shade it, it's going to come down closer to the accurate colour. Uh, beautiful thing with this, you'll probably find it covers in just one coat. Now a little bit of red leather we we'll use to paint the banana magazine he's got going on here. Some folks will paint this much brighter orange. Um, really, I don't think <laughs> I don't think glowing orange is really accurate, but that's going to be pretty close once it's shaded. Matter of a personal taste there. And saving the fun parts to last, I've got some flat red, and we'll paint in his collar tabs and his shoulder boards. Now with all the love in the world, on these Battlefront uh, plastic guys, the shoulder boards are not always very well cast. Uh, so you are going to have to just sort of make it up on some of them. Uh, if there's absolutely nowhere that looks like 
you know, it would fit properly, just mm, go for the shoulder. Uh, it's really up to you. You might want to go to a smaller brush for this too. Now, if you were in a real hurry, you might even just put them on the table like that. But I think we can go a little further. I've got here, this is some Agrax Earthshade. This is from Citadel. Uh, you can stick to Vallejo sort of a uh, dark brown wash if you fancy here, but Agrax Earthshade is what I've got to hand, and I really like how this finish is going to work. Okay, so grab yourself a big old brush, and being fairly generous with this, just cover your whole model. You'll see this goes on ah, nice and quick. <laughs> Once you've got it all over, you want to leave this about 20 30 minutes to dry, or find a nice sunny spot. And then you should end up with something that looks like this, which is pretty dark, but it's looking pretty cool. What I've got now though, because we want to introduce a lot of contrast. Uh, on these 15mm figures, because they're going to be viewed at a distance, your shading needs to be really dark, and I would suggest that your highlights want to be much sharper. So we're looking for a lot of contrast between our high and our low points. So I've got here, this is a beige red. And we're just going to do a few little blips on his face and hands and what have you, just to reintroduce some of the shape there. And you'll see, you know, that's quite bright going on, but that's exactly what we're looking for. And let's just take a look real close at the face for a second. You can see it's really just sort of a V shape along his, uh, along the side of his lip and his jawline, a little bit of splash of color on his cheekbones. And then the rest, you're pretty much leaving, because if we look at that from a distance, oh yeah, that's a face. <laughs> you know, you're really looking for arm's length painting. And I, I actually find it really difficult when I've got the model right in front of me. So my advice is to occasionally stretch your arm out, you know, and get a look at it from further away. Is the impression that you're going to give what you want? So with that in mind, let's do some more highlights. Now what I've got, this is a color called green brown, and I tend to find that the easiest way to control my brush at this sort of scale is not having very much paint on there. What we'll do is we're gonna use this to sort of sketch out some of the higher points of the model while leaving our nice dark color in the recesses there. So along as trousers here, that's really what I wanna do at the front. Um, his jacket here at the back is probably another really good spot to demonstrate this. Take these sleeves, for example, I'm really just filling out some of the areas. I'm sketching, as it were. So this bit here, all you want to do is take your time and just describe some of the higher shapes. This is not extremely precise highlighting like you might do on a Space Marine. But again, we're looking to fill out the shape of this model so we can see what he is at a distance. Probably helps if I hold him to the right distance in front of the camera though, doesn't that? Now again, up close that can look a little rough, but I promise that's going to be astounding once we get it on the table. I've got now a little bit of medium gray, and again we're going to do some fairly blocky, just splodgy highlights, where we're sort of helping just to describe the general shape of the model. So. We aren't really looking for precise, we're just, like I said, we're sketching. So let's move our dude a little bit further back from the camera, and ah, there we go. We're starting to see what we're looking for isn't to perfectly edge highlight like you would, again, a Space Marine. What we want is just that impression of color from a distance. So this next step, this is purely optional. I've got some vermilion, which is a ludicrously bright red. <laughs> and we're going to use this. We're going to highlight those collar tabs and shoulder boards. Uh, frankly, I just think it looks cool being able to see those from across the table. And then I've got just a little bit of Citadel Iron Warriors here. Any dark gunmetal will do the job. You just want to introduce a little bit of shape from a distance. So just on the top. Of his AK. Yeah, jobs are good. Now, really, that's job done. If you did want to highlight his jacket any further, then I'd suggest a mix of green ochre into your green brown, which will make it a little bit brighter. But 
that's up to you. I think this looks pretty cool as it is. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and pop his base on him and put him alongside some of his mates so you can get a look at what the finished, you know, the impression of a full army is going to look like. And finally, based up and put with the rest of his mates, he's looking pretty cool. You'll see the squad leader lurking at the front here. Hello! <laughs> and uh, I really like the effect of this, eh? It's very simple, but I think you can still see, if we zoom on a slightly different fella, uh, how this works en masse. Now, for me to do five guys using this technique normally takes about an hour and a half, and that's including basing time. So you're not looking at a, a time-consuming method. And I think it looks pretty cool. You know, I'm quite pleased with the end result of that. Now, these guys are based individually because I'm actually going to use them for a game called uh, Five Core. Uh, now, there's a few different versions of this, and Five Core is the sort of bog standard, if you will, skirmish version. Uh, there's also, for example, Five Men at Kursk, which would probably work quite well for uh, Cold War gaming. But those are done by Nordic Weasel Games, and I thoroughly recommend. I will link those in the description below. Go ahead and check those out because they are ace. So as always, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who helped make this video possible, including producers Jonathan Harris, Ben Hicks, Alan Nuttall, and Kyrie Crawford. Thank you very much, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.